Hi, I want to take you through the Smart Cuff and what has gone into this is uh, two different versions, lots of research and um, as evidence-based as possible. In addition, these are the there's only two FDA listed as a class one medical device and these are one of those. So the first thing you're going to see is the width. Anything more narrow than about uh, five centimeters is considered narrow and that's more dangerous because the more narrow the cuff the more pressure you need to fully occlude uh, both arterial and venous flow. Number two is you're going to notice the length. So the length of these you want to make sure that the cuff is long enough to fully encompass the limb. You'll notice these little tabs and what these tabs are designed to do is when this folds over, these tabs will close down and it prevents any sliding of the cuffs under high pressure and with exercise. So you won't get any, any sliding or slipping of the cuffs. This is the stem and the stem is really cool. When you inflate the cuff, if I'm exercising and I start to feel discomfort above an eight out of 10, or I feel a lot of numbness and tingling in the limb, all I need to do is press on that stem and about 10 millimeters of mercury will deflate. Now, when I'm trying to inflate the cuffs, I take the stem, I take my sphygmometer, I close the gauge, I depress, and I press on and you'll hear that clip. And then from there, I can inflate to the pressure that I need. When I take this off, I again press, you'll hear the clip again, and now I can go and exercise without the cuff on, and this doesn't need to be attached the whole time. So that is kind of the anatomy of a smart cuff.